morning, everybody. Um, it's a pity that I can't see you, but uh, apparently you can't see us. That us is uh, uh, is me, Ben Wips. I'm a professor of international business history, and uh, we also have uh, somebody with experience in the program. That's Mariana de Torre Baptista, and she is a she is a current uh, uh, master student in the program. So we are going to give you some information about the GLOCAL program, GLOCAL Erasmus Mundus program. It's called, the, the abbreviation is GLOCAL, but the full name is Global Markets and Local Creativities. This was the last summer school that we organized. That was 2019. That was uh, in Rotterdam, but the summer school will be organized uh, every year somewhere else. But of course, we have uh, the, the COVID crisis, so this was not organized for two years. At the moment, we are preparing a summer school in Prague, uh, which is not a partner university yet, but it's, it's a beautiful place and they were willing to, to host the summer school uh, next year. Where does the word uh, global come from? It comes from a globalization, and globalization is a combination of the, the local and the global. And globalization, there are many programs, or there are several programs in Europe, uh, Erasmus Mundus programs, about uh, globalization. But um, we go further, at least that's our, uh, our intention. But if we look at globalization, we have winners and we have losers. It's not just uh, one uh, happy party all the time. We see, uh, of, of, this is a, an image of the United States where you see deindustrialization. And on the other hand, we have China, which has an economic growth of 10%. Of course, it's also uh, uh, suffering from the, the Corona crisis now, uh, but still the economic growth is much higher than let's say in the west and by 26 2026 china will be the largest economy in the world and what you see now that uh, there is also a clash between uh, the us and china and that's even called slobalization at the moment so economic growth and world trade is slowing down so these are about uh, the topics, we also study local creativities because if we just would study globalization, let's say outsourcing of production, for example, from Europe to Southeast Asia in the last 30 years, we completely underestimate the effect of insourcing and of the local creativity that's taking place. And a good example uh, is th that um, European firms are also producing for global markets and many of these firms are creative firms. And a good example is LVMH, the largest conglomerate in the luxury fashion industry, which produces uh, fashion, champagne, watches, fragrances, Suitcases, Louis Vuitton food suitcases, uh, uh, spirits, uh, jewelry, etc. So it's all part of that 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 uh, company, and it's not the only company in Europe. There are more examples of big holding companies, big conglomerates, which started somewhere in the 1980s at the same time when outsourcing was taking place. So what we try to do in this program is we try to aim, we aim to examine how local places and local actors uh, generate, generate local competitiveness on the global market conditions. It's a two years multidisciplinary program and it's not just an economics program. It's, it's, it, we try to combine several social uh, so, uh, sciences and humanities. Um, the, the basis of the program is student and staff mobility. So students move around, but also staff move around. For example, uh, professors from Rotterdam are teaching in Barcelona. So professors from Göttingen teach in, in Glasgow. And in that way, uh, we create a genuine international student experience. Mariana can uh, tell you more about it. 
The program started in 2017, but meanwhile, uh, we have uh, extended the program and we have uh, reapplied for the program and we are now uh, moving towards 2025. What can you do with the program? Well, the degree is uh, ideal for highly talented students who seek a career in urban and public policy organizations, multinational corporations, international consultancy, uh, culture and creative industries, media and nonprofit organizations. Um, we encourage students to explore the interdisciplinary perspective on the process and experience of globalization from a place-based perspective, in particular cities, creative industries, and local cultures of entrepreneurship. The, the program started with four universities. This was the Global 1.0. Students started in Barcelona, uh, started in, in Glasgow, sorry, then they moved to, to, to Barcelona. And in the second year, they went uh, either they went to Rotterdam, to the Erasmus University, or they went to uh, the University of Göttingen in Germany. And that's where the place where the students wrote their uh, master thesis. After the reapplication, the, the program became uh, uh, much more complicated in the sense to explain it so directly. You can also check this on the website. But it, to, to, make, to give you a simple overview, students still start at the University of Glasgow. That's the first semester. In the second semester, the students, they move either to uh, Uppsala University in Sweden or they move to, to Barcelona. From there, it becomes a little bit more complicated. They either move from Uppsala to the Erasmus University or from Barcelona to the Erasmus University, or they move to Göttingen after that. But there is also another track where students move to Kyoto University or to Las Andes, Las Andes University in Bogota. And these students, they return eventually to the University of Glasgow to write their master thesis. So it's a quite, a quite a complicated start. It looks complicated, but it's there are actually seven tracks now. This this uh, Erasmus Mundus um, is also giving out scholarships. It means that you will receive a full funded uh, scholarship. We have twenty two uh, scholarships per annum. But of course, we also have the possibility for self-funded students. The tuition fees, these are the tuition fees at the moment. Uh, you have to check them uh, on, um, online for the actual tuition fees. These are the tuition fees for the self-funded students. The applications for the, uh, um, the scholarships uh are 7th of january 22 so that's uh quite uh so let's say after one month however if you uh, are a self-funded student you generally the international applications will uh, have the deadline on the 25th of july 22 and the eu applications are due 31st of august 22 if you want to, to read more uh, about uh, the, the Glocal program, check our website. You can check the, the website of Glocal, but you can also check the University of Glasgow, which is the leading institution. Um, and of course, after uh, this session of after our talk, you can always ask questions. And now I give the floor to Mariana. Thank you, Ben. Um, hello, everyone. Unfortunately, I cannot see you, but I'm here to tell a little bit about my experience as a student. So my name is Mariana, um, and I'm on Pathway E, and uh, I'm a scholarship holder um, student of Glocal. This first picture, it's a picture from Sweden uh, that I take. Um, I took um, at the beginning of the year when we had still winter. 
Um, you can pass the slide, please, Ben. So uh, just to introduce a little bit, um, we Glocals are a very diverse um, group of students. So there's people coming from varieties of places in the world. Um, and um, here I try to, I use the, uh, some information that we had from the past cohorts, but now we also have more countries uh, that joined. So it increased the, the varieties of, of countries uh, in our program. Now we are in cohort four and um, also with cohort three and um, for uh, the number of countries uh, that, we, uh, that we get in touch with uh, even increased. Next slide, please. Um, just to introduce a little bit about me. So, um, yeah, as I said, I come from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. I have a bachelor in economics uh, and I was interested um, during my bachelor degree in urban economy, feminist economics and cultural and creative industries. Um, while I was in the bachelor's too, I did my an exchange program to Belgium and that opened my eyes and made me realize how important it is to be connected with people globally and to yeah, be around and how much I learned having an international experience uh, really pushed me to try uh, to study abroad. And Glocal was the perfect fit because uh, it gave, gives me the opportunity to be in different places and meet different people. And yes, yeah, the program itself is advertised, like it's a very diverse, um, program like not only the students, but the universities and the backgrounds it will provide you. Uh, next slide, please. So just to introduce, uh, these are the, the seven tracks and I'm in track E, which is institutional change and creative industries, uh, Glasgow, Uppsala, Rotterdam. And now I'll introduce just a little bit of my experience in these three places. I'm currently in Rotterdam, but I'll tell you a little bit of all my path. Um, next slide, please. So first of all, uh, the program started in Scotland and here are some pictures. Uh, if you go to Glasgow, please do not lose the experience of traveling around Scotland because it's a massive, uh, beautiful country with beautiful, crazy landscapes and a lot to do in terms of nature and exploring. And um, here's a picture there is a friend from India, another friend from Brazil, and another friend from Austria besides me uh, in, in these road trips that we did in Scotland. Um, next slide, please. Um, so a little bit of University of Glasgow. First of all, uh, the architecture, it uh, resembles a little bit with uh, Harry Potter. So it's a very beautiful university. Unfortunately, I couldn't have class inside because of COVID. So we had uh, to take the, the semester online. But even though like the university um, was open to have us uh, studying at the library and, and meet with the other locals, of course, with some yeah, being careful, but um, yeah, I, I had a good time and we we had this uh, classes, the main, the three main courses, uh, actually the two main courses were global economy and varieties of capitalism. Um, and we have the option to, to apply for um, elective there and I applied for Latin American development. And also you can choose a language course for free. And um, it was definitely a good experience. I loved my elective. I learned French and I'm keeping my French course um, after um, Glasgow. So it was a great experience. Uh, and after varieties of capitalism, of course, this became a big joke because varieties, it's everywhere in local. So it's varieties of experiences. So next slide, please. Um, so this is a little bit of my experience in Sweden. Um, so as Ben was telling, it was the, we were the first cohort that went to Sweden before, because before everyone would go together um, to Glasgow and then continue together for the rest of the year in Barcelona. And this time was the first time that we had to split. So we went to Uppsala. And uh, first of all, Sweden, it's um, very cold. And for me, who is uh, who Brazilian, uh, was an extreme experience in many ways, but I learned a lot and it was a lot um, of fun anyways, and a very different country from everything I ever experienced in my life. 
Uh, this is a group picture of my good uh, flatmates and there are also locals we could live together there in Sweden. Next slide, please. A uh, little bit of the university. So um, University of Uppsala is one of the top 50 best universities in the world. And that was definitely uh, one of the reasons I chose to go to Uppsala. And um, as uh, the main courses we had that, that were mandatory for every GLOCO were sustainability of welfare state policies and history of financial markets. But we also had electives that I really enjoyed. Uh, the first one, uh, Modern Natures on Ecological History, and the second one on Theoretical and Methodological Perspectives in Economic Geography. Both courses very, very good. Um, I think it was academically the semester that was more exciting for me, and it was impressive because besides having, of course, the COVID crisis going on, and still not having like in-person classes, I really enjoyed the experience of studying hard, but like with very good lectures and seminars and the way the university there is like structured. We were in the economic history department and um, I was impressed on how much I enjoyed their approach and the, how they organized classes. I was also as an audit participating in two other courses, but not officially registered. One of them was sustainable economic futures and the other one history of economic thought. Uh, both very challenging and uh, very inspirational for my life in many ways. So I, I definitely can say Uppsala was a challenging semester in terms of the cold, but definitely a great experience. Um, next slide, please. So now, uh, just so you know, because first I put only the cold parts of Sweden, but at the end, we could do a road trip around Sweden when it was summer. And I mean, summer in Sweden is too 17 degrees, so not summer in my terms, not even my concept of what is um, winter in Brazil, but it's still uh, the nature in Sweden gets amazing. And this is the Baltic Sea and we enjoyed it a lot. Um, next slide, please. So just um, also a little bit of my experience, uh, of course, because of COVID, definitely this uh, cohort experience for everyone is very different. And I got stuck in Europe because I couldn't go back to Brazil during vacation. So which was not such a bad thing because I got stuck in Europe for three months and I enjoyed it traveling around because COVID situation in Europe was better. I managed to get my vaccination very early in the summer, so I was able to travel around. So I went to Spain, France, Germany, Austria, Portugal, and Italy. And um, I took this decision to, to travel and it was a bit scary because I was sometimes traveling alone, taking my decisions alone, away from my family, but still, um, especially with, of course, the help with the, of the scholarship, this was a unique experience of my life. And uh, what motivates me to keep on going was uh, the excitement of having uh, some festivals going on in different places. So I went to a dance festival and a photo festival as well. Um, next slide. Here, just a, a little bit of the pictures I took and uh, during vacation, I hope you can also enjoy the summer in Europe. Next slide, please. So finally, I arrived in the Netherlands and this is uh, some pictures I took in Utrecht, which is uh, the city from Ben, uh, who spoke first. And um, I am a cheese lover and, and uh, I definitely like the Netherlands because of that. They are also crazy cheese eaters. Uh, next slide, please. Finally arriving Rotterdam, uh, here we have, uh, it's a, a very challenging university in terms of academic production as well. Now I have to start my master thesis writing, but we also have many mandatory classes. One of them, Rise of the Global City, Creative Industries. We'll have, I think it's Fashion and the Heritage and I wrote it wrong. But, and um, for electives, I have International Relations Theory, I will have later another elective and also I can choose an internship. And uh, besides all that, also the research workshop to help out having feedback and all from your supervisor to start writing your master thesis. Um, my master thesis will be connected with the internship I got. So I'm be, I'll be talking about photography and um, 
uh, yeah, and um, visual narratives from the South. So I'm very excited about it. Um, next slide, please. Uh, just a little bit of the faces uh, here that are in our Rotterdam team, like those who uh, half of them came from Barcelona to Rotterdam. So it's like a re-encounter. And that's pretty exciting because we had so, so many different experiences and now we encounter here again and uh, exchange more. Uh, finally, um, I, I think next slide, please. Uh, please check out our, our blog. We have an amazing local experience blog that we share out a bit of who we are and uh, what we do academically and uh, like tips to survive local, tips on how to apply and um, a bit of, of our yeah, vision on local. So you can always reach out to us in LinkedIn or by the website you can get um, our contact. So feel free to reach out and ask any doubts you have. And um, yeah, I think that uh, we also have an Instagram account that is worth checking and we are very responsive, responsive there as well. Uh, it's the global experience as well. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope I'm still on time and looking forward to hear any questions or if you have any doubts or something.